mesh. So now we are going to um, make sure we can make strokes with this uh, brush. So we're going to go to stroke and under curve we are going to press on the curve mode. We're going to use pen and snap which is the default which uh, is which is used to snap is used to uh, snap the mesh of the brush onto the surface of the project we uh, object we are drawing on and bend is used so we can move this uh, middle part of the brush so now we are going to close stroke to have more space and on the under brush we are going to go on the modifiers and make some adjustments now we can see we have these holes uh, which we don't want so we are going to use weld points and after we click on this line it's going to update uh, the new uh, settings now we also see we don't really have what we want and we can fix this with setting up the curve resolution up to 5 and again clicking on the line now we have this beautiful curve created which is, is looking as like a tube pipe whatever you want to call it so now we can see this brush is multiplying the center part and uh, leaving the leaving the start and the end of the brush uh, as we created it so this is why we have to have uh, three, uh, poly groups so we are multiplying this one and this is the starting port, part and the end part so now because we have two sub tools in this brush we can we can uh, switch between them and we can switch between them by pressing the M button on the keyboard and selecting the uh, one we want and again to update click on the curve now we can see we have to uh, weld points again and make curve adjustments and we can see the second one isn't this beautiful so we can also use this multi mesh selector if we set it on one if it's, it's set on zero, it's not going to do anything. If we set it on one, if we click on the line, it's going to. It should. It should circle between all the subtools we have in this brush. Just because we have only two subtools, it's going to circle between them. If we uh, would have more than uh, two subtools, uh, we could uh, set this multi mesh selector on two, and it, and it would go uh, from the last one to the first one. And if we put it on the three, it's going to randomly select uh, the subtool. So uh, we can. Uh, set the size of the, the size of the parts with the size of the brush so we, if we click the S and make it bigger and again click on the line it's going to make the parts bigger and again 
same on the opposite, si opposite side. So now we can bend it all around however we want to put it. So, other thing we can set is if I will find it, I'm going to show it. Yeah, uh, now for this kind of brush, this is not really suitable, but just to show it, we can uh, click on the size and we can we can create such uh, forms according to this uh, histogram and this is another cool future of feature for this brush now I'm probably not going to find uh, Tabs, this is what I'm looking for. <coughs> now we see the brush is uh, on top of the object we are drawing on, and if we embed this uh, this setting, it's going to push the graphic into the the mesh into the object on which we are uh, drawing on. So, this is it guys, I hope you enjoyed it, uh, no, 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 we are going to, I'm going to show you now how you can uh, save this to use it more than just one time. So, we are, you go up to the brush, you have al already the icon selected, so we're going to save as and save as anything you want so I'm going to use curve multi pipe 2 and you can uh, you can save it on your personal you can save it on your personal uh, map or into pixelological pixelological zbrush zbrushes curve and this is it uh, I hope you enjoyed it and make some use of this knowledge of creating something out of basic shapes and using masking topology tools and creating brushes ZBrush 4R4 is really something so till next time enjoy ciao